So previously we learned that TypeScript has the same basic primitive types as JavaScript. So we can see it has string, number, and boolean, right? And that's easy enough. But TypeScript also extends those types with any, unknown, void, and never. So let's look at those. So type any is a special type you can use as an escape hatch when you don't want something to cause type checking errors. So for example, you might get a complicated API response or there's a type you don't know how to type, just slap an any on it and move on with your life, right? Don't waste hours trying to type something because TypeScript at the end of the day should help you and not impede you in doing your work, right? You can just go back later and type it out. Avoid using any if possible, but it's all right to use it when you're starting out and learning, right? So let's take a look at an example. So for example, if we have an API response, that's an object, let's say this is data and it returns an array. So for example, if we want to access something on this response that doesn't exist, or maybe exists, we don't know. So TypeScript is going to yell at us, it's going to say property doesn't exist on type blah, 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 because it doesn't, and this type is already inferred, right? So you can say, all right, TypeScript, I not in the mood to deal with you today, I have things to do, you can just say any, and boom, done. And that's perfectly acceptable. So as I said here, using type any is useful in situations where you're working with a library that lacks types, you have a complex API response you don't want to type, the API of the code you're writing could change. So you're like working on code and you don't even know if it's going to be what it is at the end of the day. So you don't even have to type it out because it's going to change, right? But for example, another thing you should be aware of, like don't let your editor bully you. So you can say, hey, I really don't want any type checking or whatever, so you can just go at the top of your file or wherever and you can say ts no check and it's not going to check your file and you can work on your feature whatever you want and then later you can just remove this comment and everything is going to be fine all right so let's take a look at unknown so unknown is the type safe version of any you can assign any value to type of known but you can't do whatever you want so we have to use type narrowing before we can use a value and we also can access any object properties unless we type narrow it or use type assertion so type unknown can only be assigned to type unknown and type any so let's look at an example here so for example if we have const api response again it's going to be data array and then if we say it's unknown so it's assignable to any const any type any it's going to be the api response which is perfectly fine and then it's assignable to unknown and so just so i can show you what it is right you're like <laughs> you're not going to think about these things when you're like working in your code yeah so this is fine const other type and then we haven't talked about this yet, but we're literally just describing the type. So this is an object, right? So we can use the curly boys and we say, hey, it has this property data, which is an array, right? And then we can say API response. And this is an error because it's not assignable to anything else. And we can see that this is true here. Yeah, so let's see how we can type narrow it. So for example, if we say type API response and type of See, type of API response is an object. We can say API response.data from the object, right? But TypeScript is giving us this error. Property data does not exist on type object. And that's right because it's of type unknown. So for example, if we used any here, just see, everything would be fine and you wouldn't have any type safety, right? And this would suck. So let's turn it back to unknown. And then here, I have an example how we can use type assertion or you can do checks. You can do like if data on API response, etc. But let's just use type assertion and we're going to learn what type assertion is later also. So we can say const response API. So we're basically saying here, hey, TypeScript, I know better than you. Don't bother me. We can say the data is this type, right? And then when we say response, boom, we get autocomplete and there is no warning. And now we basically narrow the type. Because if we hover over here, here is the type, and this is what we get returned. So this is really awesome. Let me show you another example I don't have here. So for example, when you have a try catch block, I think this was also a recent change in TypeScript that was added. So for example, when you have a try and catch, 
catch returns an error, I believe. It says it's any here, but uh, it's actually unknown, I'm pretty sure. And then when you're catching an error here, you can just say if error instance of error. And then TypeScript isn't going to complain in your code. But yeah, let's look at more examples, right? Because always examples, examples, examples. So let's say we have, let me just see, just remove this. Yeah, so let's say we have this array. So we're going to have names of Pokemon. We're going to throw in a monkey wrench. We're going to throw in a number and an object. So we want to loop over these things, but we want to do different things based on if it's a number, string, etc., turning it into a string or whatever. So let's really see how we can type that out. So for example, we can create a function, pretty print. Let's just say input which should be a known. So we get type safety, right? Because if we type any, we can do whatever we want, YOLO, right? So we can say array is array. So we're checking if it's an array and then we can do something based on that. So we can do input map pretty print and then we can join whatever we get. So let me see. Mm -hmm. And let's do one if it's a string. So if type of input equals string then we can return the input because you don't have to do anything right and if type of input is a number then we should uh, not number <laughs> what was that right so we can return remember our string function really nice or we can return three dots right so we have our values here so we can say const pretty values is going to be just see pretty print values and then we can console log pretty values and this is going to be safe so as we can see here so input is unknown but if you look at here so here we checked if it's an array and then it's array of any right and if you look at here it's of type string and same here we can see that the input is numbered that we're turning into a string. So that's how we get more type safety and even we can run it here. So if you want to run a TypeScript code, usually you run node scripts with node and whatever the name of the script or if it's index, you can just type it out. But we can use npx ts node. That's basically like node and we can run this example so we can get the output and then we get what we expect, right? And this is really awesome. So here's another example of a safe parse. So let me just do this. So let's say we have some JSON. I'm gonna copy it over so I don't goof it up because it's really relevant. Yeah, so for example, if we have a function safe parse, it accepts a value that's a string, right? And then let's say it returns unknown and we're going to see why. So this is just going to be JSON parse and we're going to parse the value. And then we're going to say object, save parse, and then we're going to pass the JSON in, right? So why is this safer? So for example, let's say we have to access the name, right? So we can say object.name. But TypeScript is like, hey, this is unknown. I'm not sure does this exist or not. Property name does not exist and type unknown. And even if it exists here, TypeScript really isn't aware of it because we haven't typed it out. But if you just said any, Boom, <laughs> now we've caused maybe a serious problem, but maybe you haven't. So yeah, so if you didn't use unknown, the inferred return type for safe parse would be any, meaning you could do whatever you want with the object. So you should avoid using any or unknown if possible, and you should type your code out, right? But it's really perfectly fine to use those values when you just don't have time, you're stressed, don't let your editor bully you, don't let TypeScript get in your way. At the end of the day, this is about having confidence in your code and not <laughs> appeasing someone or anything else, right? Okay, so let's look at void. So void is the absence of having any type. So there's no point assigning void to a variable since any type undefined is assignable to type void. So let's just see. So for example, if we have a variable, Pokemon, oh my bad, let's just say void. Yeah, so we can say Pokemon undefined and this is the only thing you can assign it to. If we try. Pikachu is going to complain at us. Type string is not assignable to type void. So yeah, so we've already seen void, how it's inferred when you don't return anything. 
as I showing you here. And we already went through this example, but let's do it again. Like repetition is awesome. Yeah, so Pokemon string. And if you say console log Pokemon, if you hover over the log Pokemon function, we can see void is inferred. So we can say void. And this is the same thing. So previously I mentioned how void or being explicit at the return type of our function can save us from refactoring. So let's see an example of that. So for example, function log Pokemon takes a Pokemon list, which is going to be an array and it's going to return void, right? So we can say Pokemon list for each Pokemon and then we can return Pokemon. And obviously you need to spell this right. So this is really returning it for this new array, right? So, or it's really not a new array. You can do anything or it can even be a map, right? So you're doing some operation, right? So it's like Pokemon. And this function isn't returning anything. So that makes sense, right? So let's see how this can go wrong when we refactor it. So we can say function log Pokemon refactor the same deal, Pokemon list, going to be an array. And here we're saying it returns void because we're explicit, we can have confidence that the end result should be the same, but we can make a blunder here. We can say const Pokemon of Pokemon list, and then we can return Pokemon. And now we're actually returning a value from the function. And if we hover over this type string is not assignable to type void. And TypeScript is really awesome. So let's look at another one. So let's look at never. And never is an interesting one. And I don't want to say I never use it, but I honestly never use it. So type never represents values that never occur. So for example, let's take a look at void again, right? So let's say we have a function that is, I don't know, let's say greeting and it's console log hello. And let's say this is void. The thing with void is that void is still going to return undefined because it's assignable to undefined, right? But yeah, let's just uh, log it out greeting and we can see it's going to return our hello and undefined. So that's really different from never because never can have a value. You use type never when there's no reachable endpoint like a while loop or error exception. Variables get the type never when narrowed by type cards to remove possibilities. You're going to see an example of this. So for example, if we use never, this should be an error because it says a function returning never cannot have a reachable endpoint. And here is a reachable endpoint because it returns undefined. So I hope that makes more sense, but let's look at more examples, of course. So for example, if we have a function that's an infinite loop, it should return never while true. And then you have some logical code, whatever. But really you shouldn't think too hard about this because yeah, at the end, I. I don't think I ever use never, but yeah, I mean, this isn't a mistake if you type void or anything else, it's not like you're doing anything wrong, but yeah, just so you're aware of it. Yeah, so we have more examples. We have, oops, we have function error, maybe message string returns a never. And you can say throw new error message. And again, there's no reachable point. And maybe we have a function timeout milliseconds. It's a number. It returns a promise. Ah, now we're using a promise that has never. So we can return new promise. And then we can just, we don't really want anything for the first one. We can just say reject. And then inside here, we can set timeout. We can pass it a reject. Again, just like returning new error, right? And then we can even just see timeout. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so we can just add the milliseconds and that's pretty much it. So I hope this makes more sense, but really don't worry or stress about when you would use these things because it's only going to make sense. Just really think about what you're doing. Just imagine TypeScript is your friend and you're explaining something to it, what you have, right? So it can help you out with types. But yeah, we can move on. Let's see how, as I mentioned here, so variables get the type never when narrowed by type guards. So we can see how this is awesome by this example. So let's create a get Pokemon by type function 
function get Pokemon by type. And some of the types we haven't learned yet, but don't worry. Let me expose you to this early. So later when we explore, it's going to make a lot more sense. So Pokemon type, and we can say fire. It can be water or ooh, it can be electric. So let's see type narrowing in action. So we can say if Pokemon type is fire, we're going to return, let me just copy this over. You can return fire Pokemon. So you can see if we have over Pokemon type, fire, water, electric. So if we say if Pokemon type water, we can return water Pokemon. Let's do this. Okay, so let me see if it log out Pokemon type. So if we hover over Pokemon here, so at this point Pokemon can be anything because we haven't narrowed it down. So if we hover over it, Pokemon type is fire, water, electric. But at this point, TypeScript, look, look how awesome TypeScript is. So it can infer all these crazy things. So at this point it knows, hey, this can't be fire anymore. It's water or electric. And then when this is done, it says, hey, it can't be water or fire, it can only be electric. And now we can use never to check if we have all checks in place. So if we go here and say const remaining, remaining Pokemon types, if we say never, and we say that should be Pokemon type. So if we hover over it, remaining Pokemon type is displayed, but its value is never used. We can ignore this. Type string is not assignable to type never. So we really get a nice warning that we lack the check for electric Pokemon. And then we can even return remaining Pokemon types. So let's see what happens if we try to run this code. So we can go here and we can also run npxcs node and then boom, it explodes. So we can see the remaining Pokemon types, never Pokemon type, and we can see the error plain as day. So let's just fix this problem, right? So we can copy this over and then we can say if Pokemon type electric, right? We can say electric and let's give it a nice emoji, electric. Here it is. Okay, so let's run it again. And also let me just console log this so you can see the output. Yeah, let me run it. Yes, note, and we should see electric Pokemon and that's wonderful. So to recap, avoid using any and only use unknown if you have to. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There are really no set rules. Remember, don't let your editor bully you and TypeScript is your friend. So yeah, catch you in the next one.